What's up guys, it's Andrew at Elite Gaming HQ. And man, it's been a minute. I've been buried under responsibilities, possibly poor life decisions, and PC builds. So I haven't really been able to put out a video in a little while, but the good thing is I have the next two videos planned. But today's video is something short and simple, although a lot of people don't know about it. So I'm gonna break it down and show you how it all works. I just wanted to make a new video to add to my things you should know about your gaming PC playlist and to keep that content pushing forward. So the thing I wanna talk about today is something that a lot of people don't consider or you get a PC built and whoever builds it for whatever reason they hook your fans right up to the power supply well the reason is because it's easy and it's not really the best thing to do and you can run into problems this way you can run into noise problems and you can run into performance issues a little bit of backstory when I first put together my 460 X crystal build I didn't have any splitters so I hooked all three fans directly up to the power supply which worked great for a little while the noise didn't really bother me but I forgot about it so then when I mounted my radiator to the front maybe a year down the road I I forgot that these fans were being controlled by just the power supply alone and they were always going to run at a specific rpm so when my cpu got hot it couldn't draw any more cooling than what it already had and eventually with an aio all-in-one cooler you're just going to keep getting hotter and hotter and hotter to the liquid inside the cooler is just hot enough to basically cause failure like the system would turn off in the middle of rendering videos and that's the only time it would because that takes about 100 percent of my cpu so that's a problem and i had to think of a solution i'm like what is going on here so i forgot that i hooked up that way i took everything apart i saw what i did wrong and as it wasn't a problem in the beginning and like it's probably not a problem for a lot of people but eventually it can be especially with dust and everything like that so basically the power of this little splitter here now i had a three to one these are a two to one adds a huge difference now i'll show you this a little bit later in the video but when you hook directly up to your motherboard you have the power to make your custom fan curve now when you run directly off your power supply these things are just running at a specific rpm the whole time they will never increase your cooling possibilities or decrease it or manage noise levels better so basically what you can do is you can plug all of your fans into your motherboard itself as i could show you here how simple it is there's a little notch you just follow the notch you plug it in you put your four pin connectors directly to the fan then you can go into your bios make a custom fan curve for my example because if you look at my actual build here my radiator is pulling off the front so my front fans are actually connected to run off the cpu so when the cpu starts to get hot the front fans kick on more and it puts pushes more air through my radiator, which at the end of the day makes a better cooling solution. Now this can result in more noise, but here's the thing. Whenever this happens is only when I'm rendering and I'm not recording at the same time, so it's not a problem. But it'll also result in less noise when you're doing stuff like gaming and recording and stuff like that when you're not needing so much thermals. Now the one caveat is I have noticed that when I've done builds, I had to turn up the fan curve just a bit because if it's on the lower side with an RGB or an LED fans, sometimes with those fans, the lights will not even light up to their full potential unless you get to a certain point and that's fine like i said i'll show you in a bios you just start the threshold at about 50 percent a peak operating temperature i would say is about 80 to 85 degrees so you can turn your fans to when they get about 80 degrees c they're at 100 percent and they'll just knock it back down we'll get another angle of how you just install this little cord and for a second let's admire the beauty of the asrock fatality motherboard This is going into a new build which I'm gonna feature on a channel and it's gonna be a good one. Also in that build is a Cooler Master liquid cool solution that I'm gonna review in the next video. And if that video is already up, I'll put a card here for it. But this is a cheap solution for liquid cooling, RGB, all in one, it's amazing. But let's not go too much about that right now because that's another video. So you have your fans hooked up, you have them connected directly to the motherboard. Now let's go into the BIOS and take a look and I can show you exactly how to set this up with your fan curves and everything else. So basically out of a quick video here, what you can do is you can go to every fan independently you can set a custom curve you set it where you want it to start where you want it to peak which peaking at 100% is fine as long as you're fine with the noise but you don't want it to be too soon because you don't want to be sitting at a normal operating temperature and your fans just kicking because then you won't even be able to hear yourself think and if you like the record or anything like that that's obviously going to be bad now you can set the temperature to different parts of your PC and I personally like to use the CPU temperature it's not always going to be the best because you could have a kick-ass cooler 
cooler and you don't want the rest of your components to get that hot but i would recommend starting at 40 or 50 percent and if you have a standard cooler not like a liquid cool system and you got a red urn on top or something like that then you can go ahead and set it up to 100 at about 80 degrees and you can start it at 50 or you can do all the fans independently now all the systems will not look like this this is generally how it looks as you see i turn it up and i hit save now how you get to the screen if you guys don't even know how to get into the bios is just spam the delete button as you do a restart you should come to the bios now if you don't know what you're doing please don't mess with any kind of overclocking or any of that nonsense the fans are pretty straightforward you can't really mess too much up you can play around with it for a while to get the right noise to cooling benefit ratio but like i said you don't want to mess with too many things in here because you could make it at very little the system to crash but at worst you could also make it so that you have to reset your cmos and that's going to be another video altogether it's kind of a pain in the ass you have to take out a battery sometimes you got to move a jumper and if you don't know what you're doing with computers it's probably not a good thing to get into it's not a big deal but it's if everything's working don't break it is basically what i'm saying so just adjust your fans to you see fit but anyway so i can't stress enough the importance of this little device and how good it is and how great it can be for a simple system i know it's simple and it sounds ridiculous but this thing can make a huge difference and you can pick them up on amazon for like five bucks you can open up your pc when you do your next dusting look around see how your fans are connected most of the time if you get it from a retailer or some other build company they're not going to spend the extra five bucks because that's overhead to make this work what they're going to do is just put it right into your power supply if they do then good on them and that's great you can let me know in the comments below but i really don't think a lot of them are going to do it me personally i try to do it all the time there's some situations where you just can't like certain rgb situations where the fans have to plug directly into like a power box and it doesn't let you adjust it and that that is what it is and in situations like that you want to have a good cpu cooler if you're going to pay the price and not being able to adjust your fan but that's the end of the video it's coming to a close and I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I, I use my new camera, so I'm trying to test it out. And sorry, I haven't had a video in a while. I have been pretty busy and also been procrastinating like a motherfucker. But if you liked the video, hit subscribe, join a notification squad, or you won't know when my videos post anyway because YouTube. And I'll catch you guys in the next one, which will be in a couple days when I review this cooler and show you how awesome it is. This amazing build, this red surprise build I have coming up, it's actually a, a build for a friend's father. And they gave me a huge budget and was like, make this thing awesome so guess what they're getting a fucking awesome computer so i can't wait to show that off to you guys it'll be on instagram it'll be up here i might even put some pictures up on twitter and i'll catch you guys on the next one my name is andrew this is elite gaming hq thanks for watching guys the more you take from the cold the more people will be willing to help you fight back